Welcome to Let's Learn Surviving Mars. All right, this is Atticon, and welcome to our Surviving Mars Quick Start Guide for the Church of the New Ark, playing as the oligarch uh, character. In this episode, we're going to focus on how to quickly establish your first base and quickly have that first child so you could get approval for your colony. So we're going to go out, as I said, Church of the New Ark, and uh, we're going to... Um, do something a little different here in terms of fuel. We only have one rocket. We want to turn that rocket quickly every time. So we're going to tweak our our, our uh, loading profile here so that we are carrying two moisture evaporators, two moisture evaporators, sorry, <laughs> and two fuel refineries so that we can get this rocket down and back up into space quickly. So we're going to have, we have to make sure that we have at least uh, 10 machine parts. We can cut down a little on the others. And, but again, we need 10 machine parts to do the build that we, that we plan. But five polymers and five electronics will, will get the job done. And we're going to use a specific spot I found just because this spot has extreme cold waves harsh dust storms and very low water and that's three things that we need to be able to deal with in in this game so i thought we might as well combine them all in, into one fell swoop so the first thing we have to do is establish our fuel re our refuel station in other words we have to be able to Welcome produce fuel to and get it on a rocket and get the ship back so anytime you start one of these immediately pause queue up your um, scanning and queue up your research. Now, I've, I've played a lot as the Church of the New Ark, and I've, I'm, this is new for me, this idea that they have 100 research. This is a recent change. Uh, every time I've played it before this, uh, they didn't have any research. Now, important ones are you want to get, uh, the ones you're really trying to get early, to, to, for me, are the um, Explorer AI, where he gets uh, 100 research, and the sponsor one, where the sponsor gives you 100 research. So that's one in the social, one in the robotics, and that's where I always um, queue it up. So what I'm doing here is looking to see, we're all on pause, pause now, where am I likely to want to build it? I see that there's rare metals up there, let's call it to the north of us, and so I want to build my initial uh, refueling station toward that goal. So the easiest way I've found to do that is set my concrete and then run one line of cable as far as it'll go out straight away from that uh, concrete. That way I don't have to measure anything, count anything. Uh, this just seems to work for me. And I always put down one universal depot, a concrete and a metals because we're going to have a lot of concrete and a lot of metals uh, pile up. Also, eventually, we'll put out a fuel depot. In fact, there it is. I'm going to put a fuel depot here because I want that fuel to be stored separately, and I want to be able to store as much as uh, I can produce. And eventually, we'll put food in a, in a near our dome, but that's, that's on down the line. So now, I want to set this up in a particular way. So I'm going to go out. I have a spreadsheet that I use to kind of help me figure out what do I need to build in order to do the, what I'm trying to achieve? So what I'm trying to achieve here is set up my refueling station, as I said. So I've, I've got this thing set up so that it'll calculate for me how much, how much, uh, how much power do I need, uh, yada, 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 in order to, to get things going. And then you, wanna, you have to do, unless you brought concrete with you in, on your um, rocket, you have to build solar panels in order to get that concrete production started because you need the concrete to then help you build your any wind turbines you might want to do to give you more power. So uh, always start out with those um, solar panels. A couple would actually do, but I, I figured well, I, my calculations were that I was going to have to do four four of these, so I went ahead and built, built the four. But, um, oh, and I do have to say, I do use two mods. I usually don't use mods, but there's two that I love. One of them is, uh, you will see how fast we're going here. 
um, maybe it may look weird to you, like I've Meteor sped it up or incoming. something. But it's actually double time. There's a mod out there, and I uh, I will on a video show who who did that mod. It, he get he deserve, he or she deserves credit for it. And also, uh, and it basically it doubles up your speed. So instead of 3x and 5x, normal 3x, 5x, you get normal 5x, 10x. So we're actually playing the game at 10x speed. And there I just turned on the other mod I use. And this one you could think of really is a bit of a cheat. But I get so sick of micromanaging that transporter and trying to go out and see, okay, there's some metal on the ground, go out there and set up a transportation route. I can't see the metal very well. It's really hard to find it. So there's this mod that just automates the transporter and he will automatically go out and find ground metal and polymer that's out there on the ground in areas where we have uh, scanned and bring it back to uh, the nearest um, Universal Depot, dump it on the ground there, recharge himself, and go off and do it again. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing because it's exactly, and the reason I don't hesitate to use it is that's exactly what I would be doing if I was running that transporter manually. So that's those are the two mods that I use. Now, we're, I've, according to my calculations, I needed uh, to set up these eight uh, power. Actually, I think my calculations have, are a little bit um, too conservative. I'm setting up more power than I need, both here and eventually in the dome that we build. And I've actually revisited that. I think I've uh, improved on that. Uh, we shall see. Uh, but um, in this one, we do I do overbuild a little bit, and that's a sin. Overbuilding is a sin. So what we're setting up here are two. We set up our power. We set up two refineries and two uh, moisture evaporators. Those moisture evaporators, of course, have to be spread out a little bit so they're not trying to get moisture from the same air. That way they both operate at full efficiently and efficiency and make you one uh, water uh, per hour. And that, that will feed into the refineries, which will then turn that into fuel. So what, now we're going to be fighting for power. So you saw me there. I, I gave the higher priority to the concrete because as we get this power from the solar panels, we're gonna to want to feed that to the wind turbines to get them going. Now, once we have all that going, we'll be able to run 24 uh, seven with all of the, uh, with both moisture, uh, moisture uh, evaporators Anomaly and both found. refineries and our sensor tower, which I forgot to mention, I've definitely set that up. You want your scanning to go fast, and I'll show you why in a minute. Well, it's just obvious you wanna go, go fast and, and figure out where all that um, metal is on the ground, you want to figure out where your anomalies are. Now, we don't have an explorer yet, but we want, when we do bring an explorer, which will be, you know, kind of spoiler alert on our next uh, rocket, uh, we want him to be busy. We want him to go from anomaly to anomaly and and get us as much research as he can get done because, um, again, we're very, even though we have 100, that's not much research. But our main goal of this start is to turn that rocket around as quickly as we can. We want to get that rocket up in the air and flying back to the earth as quickly as possible so he can, he can bring us uh, our next load of supplies. So we're in, as you can see, we're early in Sector day three scanned. right now. We've got everything going running 100%, so that's good. And the rocket is getting being fueled by two refineries. And by the way, the oligarch character, another reason it's a good one for the... Um, well, and it's interesting. Uh, there's two reasons it's good. It gives you a 25% pr uh, production bonus on your fuel refinery. So instead of two fuel refineries there, we in effect have two and a half because each one of them is getting a 25% bump on their production. So we have in effect two and a half uh, fuel refineries pumping out fuel and we only need two water to uh, support them. So that's a wonderful thing. And that lasts the entire game. So that's, that's a benefit Sector that stays scanned. with you. And then the other thing the oligarch brings us is the arcology. Uh, and I, I'll just shut up right there, but <laughs> you see what I did about that. So um, we're trying, again, we're trying to turn this rocket around as fast as we can. And, and I'm checking to see we're about two-thirds of the way loaded now. And I want to make sure I don't goof up because I've done it before and forgotten to build my drone hub. You notice I didn't build it right away because we don't need to be maintaining it right away. And we have plenty of drones working to get the job done for us. Uh, to move to get all that stuff done quickly and plus i wanted to see where to put the drone hub 
You don't want to commit your first drone hub too early if you can avoid it because you really want to know where that first dome is going to go. And in our case, we're one of those poor countries. We need money. So the way I like to attack that is if I can find rare metals that I can export right away to fund the supplies I need to keep me going until we can become self-sufficient. Milestone So uh, there you go. We can, there we go. Day four, we've uh, sent our rocket off. So that's a pretty good turnaround. Could have been a little better. Could have done a better job setting up that uh, fuel station. In fact, I'm going to do a video on, on setting those up quickly and, and quick turnaround. Sector scan. But we got it out on day four. That's pretty good. And so we're going to continue our research, and we're targeting that um, rare metals up there above us. But we notice we've just got our scan completed up there, and there's an even better rare metal just above it. So that worked out beautifully. Um, so we're going. To, that's going to be where our first stone is going to go up there. And there are so many ways you could play this. I, one of the, this is. This is a good game. It's 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 not it's not a perfect game by any stretch, and and it and I wish it had a little more of a goal oriented task focus to it. But as as a game where you have to survive and you have to build a colony, uh, there's a lot of interesting things that have to come to play and come together for you to survive and for you to be able to do it. So here I'm going back, and that's why I like the game. But going back to my uh, build plan now and what I'm going to do here I have it set up I have some sample builds in there so I'm going to grab one for a, a small dome so I'm going to grab the uh, sample build for a small dome and then I'm going to put that into my build plan add it to the build plan so I don't have to type all that stuff in so now it'll populate and go out and figure out my construction costs and consumption and and power requirements and what have you and let me know where I've got a shortage or whatever. And I've been playing around with it. I actually had it set with zero solar panels, and I'm really trying to do, at the start, kind of a blend of solar panels and wind turbines. So I'm adjusting it down and making sure that I want what you want. Using the spreadsheets, and by the way, do you need a spreadsheet to play this game? Absolutely not. Of course you don't. There are lots of great players who don't who couldn't spell Excel. But um, I, I'm just kind of a nerdy person, and I like that kind of stuff, and I like to figure out what's going on, and I like to be prepared when I, when I do this kind of a build to know what it is I need to do. And, and it also just helps me really understand the concepts when I, play, when I look at them from two perspectives, from the spreadsheet's perspective and from the game perspective. So I'm just tweaking the spreadsheet here to figure out basically how, many, how much power do I need to build, you know, how many pan solar panels and wind turbines do I need, and uh, power accumulators to uh, complement them. And, uh, you know, uh, am I okay with the water and the oxygen and all that kind of stuff? So basically it just tells me my kind of my list of materials and lets me know what I, what I need to do and just confirms for me in my, in my tiny little brain what, what's going on and, I'm, and lets me know I'm doing the right thing. That's the whole purpose of it. And do you, again, do you need to spread Of course not. Of course you don't. Um, and most people, it'd be a turnoff for many, many people. But I, but I think some people would like it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's pretty straightforward and simple and easy to use. So um, I will share that, share, share the spreadsheet as soon as I feel like it's a little more bulletproof. One of the things that I did find was I'm over-calculating the power a little bit here. And there's so many different ways you could look at the power. And I, I've got to come up with the algorithm that I like that really matches how the game is played. And I think I'm close. And as soon as I've got that, I will uh, put the spreadsheet out uh, someplace where I can share it. Okay, so now we're going to site our dome. And the key thing for me here, uh, uh, we're going to go the rare metals route. As I said, there are many ways you can start this. We're going to go the rare metals route because money's a problem for these uh, hard sponsors. And um, so we are going to uh, make sure that that dome can um, service that um, high rare metals that we found uh, during our scan. And so Sector that's, that's going to kind of help keep us alive um, going down. So now we've placed that dome and we're getting ready to start. Now, notice the water tank is going right over there next to the uh, 
where the extractor will end up being. And you might think, oh man, that, how stupid can you get? The maintenance on things will be awful. Yeah, it is going to get a little extra maintenance, but eventually we, we're going to have to deal with cold in, in this um, on this in this go. And uh, when you deal with cold, you need space heaters, and space heaters need water. So not only are Sector they cost scan. something to build, but uh, you've got to have more and more water. So you really want to try to find a way to let one space heater do the work you need. Now, the other work you need is to keep your extractors um, from freezing and your water towers from freezing. That's the main purposes. The rest of your buildings will be cool provided you keep them powered. So now we're back. We Our, our rocket has back to Earth and we're getting our second load. We're going to get two moisture evaporators because we need, uh, I always want to have one extra water coming into my uh a dome so that I can make sure I'm filling up a water tower for backup uh, to help me to keep us alive during windstorms, basically. And um, I'm looking at what we need. I want to I want to bring food. We're also in this one. We're going to bring food. You can start farming right away or hydroponic, for example. But Church of the New Ark, that's really doesn't work well because hydroponics are 50 percent as effective. That's a drawback of, of the um, uh, sponsor. So hydroponics are kind of a bad option. You could do them, but you'd have to double them up and that would be really uh, painful. So uh, we're going to ship food from Earth for a while and that'll change eventually when we get our research and we have something we can actually grow on, on Mars. But uh, basically I'm, I'm setting that thing up so that we can get two moisture evaporators so that we have the water for the dome plus an extra. We, and, we, and that way we can keep running our fuel and, and uh, what have you. The other thing about the two fuel start is that that fuel, second fuel refinery is not redundant at all. I mean, we're overproducing fuel right now. We've got more fuel than we're going to need to keep that rocket going. You'll see how fast that thing can turn around. Uh, in fact, how fast it already has, but it'll get even faster. I mean, it'll just land, load, and go, But which is what we want. But... That extra refinery is going to be there when we get finally get down the road to the point where we do polymers because you need extra fuel for your polymers and uh, then of course your water requirements go up. The thing it just keeps cascading and spiraling upwards. The demands keep getting bigger and sector and, scanned. Uh, I, again, that's uh, what's why one of the, one of the reasons it's a good game. You get a lot of things to think of and keep keep uh, track of, but not too many. That's the other thing I like about it. It's not too ridiculous it's not it's not just you know it's not thousands of things we have to keep track of all right so we've got our dome place we're starting to build on it we're waiting on our rocket to come back with our next set of supplies to kind of finish it off cable fault reported and we we will go back and figure out okay what do we need for um you know supplies and how many more uh, wind turbines do we need? How many more, you know, whatever. And I, of course, being the nerd I am, I'll go back to my spreadsheet and look it up. Anybody else would just do it. But, uh, you know, I'll look it up and, and get it off the spreadsheet. Now we've got our Explorer. Now, I wanted to bring a Rover. Would have loved to have had a Rover too, but it didn't quite work out. And uh, you can get away without a Rover because we've got this nice tight build here. We lucked out. And our concrete and our initial refuel station are really close to our... Uh, first dome so that one drone hub can take care Anomaly of analyzed. Uh, everything. Milestone achieved. Now there is a risk with that because we don't have a redundancy like if a, um, if we didn't have a rocket on Mars at the time and a meteor hit that drone hub and took it out there would be nothing there to repair it. I mean it would just sit there dormant and our, everything we had would just eventually ground to a halt because nothing scanned. would be maintained Anomaly until found. we could get a rocket back there and uh, take charge of those drones and get some work done. So that is a bit of a risk, but it's not a it's not a huge risk, frankly. I mean, the odds are you know it's it's not it's certainly acceptable risk. And uh, that drone hub can take care of everything. We did bring some more drones to help it out to make sure that's plenty. discovered. So now we're just going to try to keep our explorer busy. And you see our dome's already going up. It's day seven, and we've already built our first dome. So that's, that's pretty good. We have an oxygen shortage. And we'll shut it down so we don't have to listen to all our shortcomings about oxygen and water. 
and uh, then we'll go ahead, we can shut it off, but then we can go ahead and place our buildings in it and get those built. So it will continue building even though the dome itself is shut off. So we're going to put in living quarter, and here's, here's the, where I was laughing at myself. I'm playing as the uh, oligarch to give you that cool spire that makes everybody super happy so we can have a baby real fast, and then I don't build it. I mean, come on. I, I, I didn't build the um, Arcology Spire, which is, has like an 80 comfort rating. It's just it's just awesome place to live. It's like this beautiful New York high rise only out, out here on Mars and forgot to build it. So um, we sort of took advantage of our character, but we sort of didn't. Dust uh, storm big approaching. Time. And here's the other, I think I made another goof up here. I believe I could have gotten that rocket out of there before the dust storm hit, and that would have saved us two days. And I failed to do so. And I'm not 100%, well, I'll try to watch it closely here and see if that uh, rocket is totally fueled. But if I didn't get it out of there in time, shame on me, because I really should have. And I think one of the things that was bothering me, do you see that? I, I think I've got a little OCD. Do you see that line there where I built that ugly looking uh, Cable. I couldn't stand it. I, I kept looking at it the whole time I was playing. And I finally, finally fixed it because I just could not stand that, that, that little curve in that. It was driving me nuts. So anyway, it's gone now. And I, 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 now I can relax and actually concentrate on playing the game. So now we're going to start building up the power that we know we're going to need based on our spreadsheet. And again, it's a little too much, but uh, uh, too much. And, and, and this is an interesting trade-off. Too much is not, is better than too little, because too little will, will kill you, of course. But too much can also kill you because you of this, this hidden demon of overbuilding where I end up running my maintenance costs up too high. Now, this one's going to turn out fine, but, but it isn't great because I really do have too many... Too much power going on here. I do not need this much power, even for a cold snap. Uh, I've got a little too much. And you could say, well, you're safer with a little too much, but you're really not. Yeah, that's an illusion because if you have too much, that means your maintenance is too much. And if your maintenance is too much, you could be in big trouble. So uh, again, do not overbuild in this game. Build exactly how much you need, maybe a little bit more for safety's sake. So if something gets hit by a meteor or something freaky happens and you lose a little bit for a while, you, you've got a little backup, but, but you don't need dozens of book at backup. In fact, right here, I'd had that spreadsheet set to where I needed a whole bunch of power accumulators because of the way I was thinking about the power at the time. And fortunately I got, you know, just, the reality of the fact that I don't have polymers and just common sense kicked in and I go back here in a little bit and delete those guys. I don't, absolutely did not need them. Did not. Uh, the spreadsheet was lying to me. Um, I don't know who that guy is that built that thing, but he just doesn't know what he's doing. So, um, again, we want, we're trying to get that, we, we just, we're not catching any breaks on this uh, research because we really want to get sector the, scanned. Um, that that robotics AI, the Explorer AI, and the uh, Mars initiative that gives you 100 from your sponsor. And then, and then because we're poor, we need the uh, Mars crowdfunding, the, uh, which gives us Anomaly money. analyzed. And we'd love to bring p good people. We'd love to have the, um, uh, the one that, uh, that, that boosts. It's another Vehicle social one that boosts low. your uh, uh, applicants. So... Um, we're not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's less than perfect right now, but that's okay. It's okay. You play the cards you, you're dealt. So what we want to do with the research though, is we want to keep hitting these um, hourglass looking ones until we get one we like. So, because what they do is they, they expose, if you will, more of the research tree. And as you expose more of the tree, then you can start cherry picking the ones that you really need. So we really need those three I mentioned. We also uh, eventually, Resources we really need low. a subsurface heater. Now, we can get away without it. In fact, we could go the whole time without it, even with cold waves if we have to. But we don't want to. It's, it, it just makes everything Breakthrough more difficult. Discovered. 
So that's one we want to get. And, and then there's a lot of, I mean, all, all those early researchers are good. They, they all, they speed up your drones. They make the batteries last longer. They, they and plus we've got to have, you know, because we're, we're so bad on hydroponics, we've got to have some kind of uh, uh, research in that tree that gives us the farms and, or the uh, fungal farm or something. Sector we need scan. something that we can create food with. But that's down the road. That's, that's after this stage is done, really. Because we're going to be shipping food, as I said, from uh, Earth. So now we're just now we've got all this stuff set up to build. We we're in a dust storm, so I shut off the um, research complete. Well, I meant to do anomaly a lot. I analyzed. A uh, shut off the uh, solar panels so they don't take too much uh, beating. Because if they take a huge beating in the windstorm, then your maintenance is going to turn right around and cost you stuff. And it's not a big deal, but but you should try to control it when you can particularly if you've got enough power without them during the windstorm. Because when the windstorm or the dust storm, the wind picks up, your turbines run faster, they can generate more power so they can cover you. They got you covered. So now we finally see that Rover AI and we're going we're gonna to pop that up to the top of the list. And that'll give us another 100 because, or did I say Rover? I meant Explorer. Explorer AI. Um, Vehicle battery low. So now that Explorer, be having being there, as long as he's there and charged, he will give us uh, 100 points of research. So bully for him, and let's get that one done. And so we're looking, we're looking pretty good here. Other than that overbuild, we're looking good. And I'm trying to promise myself not to try to tell you everything there is to know about surviving Mars. Well, let me take it back. I don't know everything there is to know. Everything I know about surviving Mars in one video. So I'm trying not to, Sector not to, scanned. Anomaly not to just found. cram too much in here. I want to keep the focus on how do you get that quick refueling station built? How do you quickly get to the place where you can build your first dome? And then our next step you'll see is how do we quickly get that approval so that our colony has been approved to move forward and we can bring more people from Earth if we choose. So we're going to keep uh, running that Explorer out and doing research. Our transporter is automated. You know, we're kind of cheating. It's going out and picking up uh, metals and, and if there happens to be some polymers, grabbing that too, but mostly metals, and bringing them back to our base and recharging get up close and personal and it again. Mars. And that one right there just so happens, uh, uh, <laughs> I looked at it later, it, that one was a very high 1,000. There, we got our rocket out on day 10. That's pretty good. But we had to wait till after that dust storm. Yeah, we really wish we could. It, could, it probably cost us two days right there. So I'm turning the uh, uh, solar panels back on now that the dust storm's over. Not that it really matters. Again, we've kind of overbuilt the power. I don't. So now we're just in uh, finish off those builds and, and wait mode on the rocket. So I think I'm going to fast forward a little bit so this isn't too long and we'll rejoin. Um, well. You know, every time I, you know, I won't do that. Every time I used to, every every last series I did, every time I fast forwarded, somebody got mad at me because I left stuff out. So I won't, I won't, I won't do that. We're going to build up here. We're going to build uh, the, the two moisture evaporator prefabs that we brought uh, in preparation for supporting the uh, dome. And we've got, we only need one. We brought two because we want to have one extra to pump water into that water tower. We want to have that water tower full because every time a dust storm hits, all those moisture evaporators are going to shut down. That's a big disadvantage of not having water that you can extract from Mars surface. And um, they're all going to shut down, so you have to be prepared for that by having a water tank, a water tower, at least one, maybe more would be better. Um, eventually, you'd like to have a, a redundant one as well, uh, in case, again, a meteor strikes. But um, you want to, you've got to have that water tower full of water or your people will dehydrate the first time the dust storm hits because everything Sector that's scan. a source of water for you is going to shut down. So we're setting that up now and now that water tower will start uh, getting uh, water pumped into it as soon as both of those are ready to go. There they are. And so now we are in good shape on water. We are in 
great shape, too good a shape in power, and we are in good shape on oxygen because we've got a moxie pumping and we've got a, a, a tank, a, a, an oxygen tank, so we're filling up, so the moxie itself would take care of the of our oxygen needs just fine. In fact, it produces two, we only need one. But it'll fill up that tank and now we've got a reserve in case, you know, something really bad happens. So now we're cool on oxygen, cool on water, cool on power. We're a little tight on our um, parts, which no surprise, of course we are. That's exactly what you would expect. You have to run a little tight when you play these hard ones and particularly when you try to go fast with it. We're still only on day 11. And we've got our dome built. It's ready to take people. And now we're going to decide. We've got one decision to make that's a big one. Do we bring people with this next load? Or do we get some more cargo? And I can tell you a very good rule to follow. If in doubt, or don't bring the people, bring cargo. And that's just what we're going to do because we cannot allow... The fact that we are so tight on machine parts and polymers, we cannot allow ourselves to get in a situation where those things shut down after we brought people there because it's too late. We are almost broke because, again, we don't have a lot of starting money. Everything's tight with these hard um, sponsors. We don't have uh, extra money to spend. We don't have extra rockets to bail us out. We've only got one rocket. We've got, we've got practically zero money. So we've got to be smart about this and make sure that we don't have a breakdown. You can see those repair indicators, but we've got some things that need machine parts right now. And, we, and those are not crucial to us to keeping people alive, but if they're falling, that means all the other ones are coming right behind it. And those wind turbines, when they start going, uh, game's over. If they, if they too many of those go and we don't have any money to get more, we don't have the means to bring more with us, we don't have a machine parts factory, then we're done. So the conservative and, and I would argue very definitely right thing to do here is to bring uh, a cargo rocket. And now we're going to get this Mars crowdfunding because we're going to need more supplies. And again, we're broke. Um, we're going to get that Mars uh, crowdfunding up there where we're researching it and so we can um, get some, get some funds out of it so that our rocket the next time it comes back uh, and is ready for cargo will actually have some money to to uh, spend but again the principle you want to learn is if you're in doubt between people and supplies it's supplies it really is supplies just almost always and the only way I would see an exception to that would be that um, if the thing you're missing is the thing that those people are going to provide you, in other words, you've already set up, uh, say you've set up machine parts factory, you're a little low on machine parts, and you are about to bring engineers into your base and they have a place to stay and they can go work in the machine parts factory, then okay, okay, that's, that's different. But uh, if you're arguing Sector between scan. parts and people, go parts. So now here comes our parts, and watch how fast this rocket turns back around. It's day 13, and he just landed. So it was about six or seven, I'd say about the sixth or seventh hour of day 13 when he landed. And our guys are loading him back up. Oh, no, actually, I take that back. I'm going to, actually, I, sorry, I take that back. This one would have been fast. See, he's already up. He's, he's about ready to go. Oh, there he goes. All right. Well, I'm making a liar out of myself. Yeah, this was the one. He, I turned him around very quickly because I'm ready for people now. I've got some supplies in there. I want to get some people in, in my, into uh, our dome. So we turned him around in, what, six hours, eight hours, something like that. So I'm going to turn the dome on and make sure it's repaired, make sure that uh, I've got everything, I've got all the oxygen Resources and power are water taken care of. And we're okay with that re the machine parts being low because we just brought enough to get us over the hump and make sure we don't have any pressing issues. And then we will, again, turn that rocket around as appropriate 
And this, and the next one, the one I was thinking of, is uh, we're actually going to delay its departure, but that's in order to allow it to gather up some money and also to time it out, because there wasn't any point in going back. Well, you'll see, you'll see. Sorry, I'm talking ahead of myself here. So I did decide after recalculating that I did want some more power accumulators as a backup in case of uh, during a cold wave. Uh, when those uh, solar generators or solar panels shut down during the day, I wanted to make sure we had some backup power. So our rocket is headed back to Earth, and we are, and you can see what we're going to do here, and, and I think I'm about to get ready to do it. It's about time I do it. Um, yeah, just out of there, I was just double-checking that four was the right number for the accumulator, because I had calculated it once at like eight and that was just way off actually four is off too but I'll explain that in, in another video so now we're back our rockets already there and we're ready to um, grab them now here's the thing I go for for this quick uh, quick uh, hit sexy is the number one trait and then I also get the three really great one you know genius and saint and um, what's the other one uh, what is it genius saint and Celebrity, uh, you want those guys if you can get them. But what we're going to do, we're going to load up with three medics, six geologists, and then our other three will be basically people who look good, people who are who have the sexy trait, people who who uh, who have other good traits. Uh, and in general, even though non-specialists would take those jobs, I would just as soon grab a specialist and put him as a grocer than to grab a non-specialist uh, unless that non-specialist brings something to the party like it's a celebrity or a, you know just exactly a whole bunch of great traits you know rugged fit composed sexy enthusiast you know if you grab one of those then grab it so there we there we just kind of um, and I try not to spend all day agonizing over that uh, if you set the traits, the, the filters the way you want them, you'll get a pretty good list right at the start. But the main thing I'm looking for, I want, I want jo cheese. six geologists, scanned. three Anomaly medics, found. and then three whatever good people that I can use. Because what we're going to do is set up our, our um, rare metals extraction so we can have some money coming in. And we'll use that money to the funding to uh, get us the other supplies we need for a while until we're ready to move on. But for this first part, we just need we just need to have six, we need 12 happy people is what we really need. That's what we're really trying to get. And you saw I was looking at that water, we finally found water. Remember this one is low on water, this particular map. And uh, the water is over there in a frozen area. So that area is like permanent cold wave. It's really hard to deal with. You could deal with it if you had to. Uh, certainly if you had a, a subsurface heater, it would be easy to deal with. You can build on it. Even when you build on it, I, there are in fact, um, that would probably be worth a fundamental video and showing you how to build on, on that uh, permanently frozen area. I'm trying not to call Anomaly it permafrost. Anomaly analyzed technically is but that's probably a good name for it so that permafrost um and here i got just flat out lucky lucky look at that i i didn't even see that i ran my explorer right by one of those um dust devils and y usually if they come that close you're dead i just lucked out I lucked out big time because it should have uh, clobbered me and i don't have a rover to go fix it so i would have been done exploring until uh, the rocket Vehicle after this one, uh, at the best, when I could bring a uh, bring a rover out there to fit to uh, repair that boy. So uh, lucky, lucky, lucky. But anyway, I was saying uh, that water is on permafrost, very hard to deal with, requires more power. You have to be careful how you build it. Make sure you have the power first before you actually finish the building. Uh, otherwise, the building will freeze before you can give it power, and then you're stuck. You can't do Full anything until you put a heater on it. So. New so here we are on day arrived. 15, late late day 15, and we've got our 12 new colonists, including our one celebrity dude here, um, who I hope will be very happy and, um, and make us a lot of money. Stick around and make us a lot of money by giving us a little bonus. So um, we have our colonists, as I, as I said, um, 
and now we want to keep them happy. And I set up the work. I think I, meant, I failed to mention that I wanted. I set up the work so that until we have a cold wave, we will have two shifts in the uh, rare metals, three on each shift. We will have all three shifts. This is key for getting the early birth. We'll have all three shifts of the infirmary, infirmary open so that, so that it keeps that comfort level requirement down low. It goes up when the infirmary is closed because they can't get in there to get help uh, that they want. So we're going to make it so they can always get to the infirmary. And the grocer has three shifts. So actually, this is a little weird, but the, the six most important jobs here are not the six um, specialists out there uh, mining rare metals, even though we need the money. But for us, for our goal of, of, of quickly having a child here, our most important jobs are the grocer and the infirmary because we want to keep these people comfortable, happy, and ready to have babies. Sector now you can see our, our rocket, as soon as it hit, I mean, it was practically within a couple of hours, it was ready to take off again. But we don't want to do that because we're trying right now. There's two things going on. We've got that Mars crowdfunding research going on slowly. And we want it, and there's no reason for us to get back to Earth before it finishes Resources because we don't low. have enough money to, to get anything to help us, right? So we're too broke, number one. And number two, the longer we stay here, the more rare metals we can load and take back with us to get more money. So this is, right now we're all about money because we, we're, we're using money to get parts. That's the strategy we're using. And therefore we need money. So we're delaying the, the launch of this rocket until um, we think it'll time up and sync up with the um, research we have going, which is going to give us a billion dollars. Now that billion dollars is going to be lovely. It's going to get us over the hump, get us the things we need to move on to uh, the next stage. All right, so I finally decided it's, uh, the timing is right. I've held off as long as I can, and it should hit pretty nicely to uh, take advantage of the Mars crowdfunding. And so our rocket is on its way back to Earth. Uh, we have people who are ready to have children, and let's just see if we can have one here pretty soon and get our approval and have this colony be deemed an initial success. And right now I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs. There's not a lot to do. I'm just, uh, we're waiting on the rocket. For the so. first time, ah, here we go. a human Hooray. has been born on Mars. It's truly a unique miracle. So early in the afternoon of uh, day 18, we have approval of our colony and we are approved to bring on new colonists and to grow and go forward. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, quick start guide for Church of the New Ark, sort of using the oligarch, using part of the uh, power of the oligarch. And I intend to do more of these uh, different combinations of sponsors and, and um, commander profiles. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed this, if you thought it was helpful. And if it was, I'll, uh, I'll keep at it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next video. Thank you.